Hello, YouTube, and welcome back. Okay, so uh, welcome, Kevin De La Plant. This is my co-author, Kevin, from uh, our um, Critical uh, Analysis and Reasoning Skills course for MCAT 2015. Um, but while I had Kevin uh, available, since you are an associate professor of uh, critical thinking as well as the founder of the Critical Thinkers Academy, I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to have a conversation about a video I did in 2012 on the topic of medical school interview ethics questions. And essentially, the medical school interview ethics question, you know, you're in a medical school interview and, it, you know, at some point, some but not, but not all of the interviewers are going to ask you questions about what is your take on euthanasia? What is your take on abortion? You know, what are your beliefs about X, Y, and Z, right? And you're going to be, for the first time, for a lot of people, you're going to be asked to, number one, have a... Uh, a principle, have a viewpoint, and then you may be asked follow-up questions about that viewpoint, yes? Mm -hmm. And so uh, in 2012, when I uh, recorded and uh, published that YouTube video, there was a lot of feedback about uh, saying, you know, it's important to have a principle, and, you know, it was really divided. The comments were divided. About 50% were like, Yep, you know, we need to have principles and it's important to maintain a point of view. But a lot of people are like, your advice is idiotic because it absolutely will not work and you cannot have, you cannot hold a principle and just maintain that value uh, in a medical school interview. It just won't work. Okay. So I wanted to, at one point in time, I wanted to have a conversation with, uh, you know, a, a doctoral level uh, individual who has been extensively trained in this kind of conversation and this kind of thinking in order to like demonstrate exactly what it is that I meant uh, back I, in 2012. I actually, I actually taught a course once mm -hmm. in grad school on the ethics of family medicine. Okay. So, awesome. you know, it was a while ago awesome. and I teach co ethics regularly here, the general ethics class for intro. So, yeah, I think we can have a conversation about this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it very much, right? So here, because well, it gives me a chance to like, well, here's, here's an example, right, of, right. of how you might uh, thumb wrestle or how you might fence with an interviewer in a way that is absolutely respectful, absolutely appropriate, and yet promote your candidacy uh, to medical school in a, a profoundly positive way. Mm -hmm. Fair enough? Okay. Yeah, so, let's do it. Uh, why don't you uh, start, you be the interviewer, I'll be the interviewee, and we'll give it a crack. I'll be the interviewer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question about euthanasia. Sure. Uh, Don, yeah. um, what are your personal views about euthanasia? Okay. Well, um, first, let me just say that uh, you know I understand the greater context of you know this kind of an ethics problem, right? Because obviously we have federal and state law that may be at play. We're going to have um, community as well as hospital policy that may uh, dictate a lot about what is uh, practical or possible uh, regarding uh, euthanizing a patient. Um, there may also be uh, ethics boards that in the real world would exist. Mm -hmm. But I recognize that the question you're asking me is none of that, right? The question you're asking me is what are my views regarding euthanasia? Mm -hmm. And for me, euthanasia is a moral wrong I mm -hmm. consider it to be killing or a form of murder. Mm -hmm. And I personally would not participate uh, in euthanasia in any way um, for uh, any of my patients. Um, would you um, be, go as far as uh, failing to cooperate with the decision of a medical board on this? I would respectfully refer a medical board decision to another practitioner. Sure. And invite okay. the board to have that practitioner uh, support the family, family decision, patient's decision regarding uh, active euthanasia or participating in some form of passive euthanasia. But I would not be uh, in the room, nor would I uh, encourage my patient uh, in any way that that would be a reasonable outcome uh, for his or her condition or life. So... Um... Let me ask you a follow-up to the question. You want to draw, you want to say that euthanasia is a kind of murder. So here's the case yes. where um, someone is, um, uh, let's take the case of someone who's still has their faculties. Yes. They're in such 
crippling pain mm -hmm. and their functionality is so diminished, they're so yes. incapacitated that staying alive for them is an agony yes. and they wish, yes. they ask for the service. So this is, um, this is a type of mercy killing, the kind of euthanasia. It's not the same as others, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, mm -hmm. there's a conscious, deliberate, this is more like assisted suicide. Correct. Right. Um, you want to say it's murder, um, yeah. but murder seems to be, on the one hand, quite different where it's, mm -hmm. you know, unjust, intentional killing of another person. That's right. Right. This person wants to be killed. Yes. So in what sense can it be murder in the same sense? Well, for me, uh, because my hand is involved, even in the most passive level, uh, it's murder. So this is how I define uh, my role as a physician. I am upholding the sanctity of life. Um, I am delighted to give palliative care. I am delighted to offer pain management techniques, uh, other appropriate treatments to help this patient who clearly is in agony, who clearly is uh, in so much pain that he or she wants to end his or her life. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted to do virtually anything short of crossing this boundary about participating in taking a life. Um, if this patient is uh, determined uh, to commit suicide, uh, I am going to uh, very, very strongly advise against it. I'm going to very, very strongly encourage other uh, courses of treatment, pain management, uh, psychological counseling, um, and offer the patient alternatives. If the patient is still insistent on committing suicide, the patient will be doing that without my support. I will withdraw myself as a physician, but I will absolutely compassionately recommend other physicians who may be better suited for this task. Thank you very much. And scene. <laughs> so yeah, so and out so, of role play, go ahead. Okay, so 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 this is a version of a response to a, a question like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and let me anticipate. Um, mm -hmm. You I, maybe you can tell me whether. What I think you would say that you, you liked about the answer is because you gave, us, you gave a definite answer to the question in the sense that you were clear about your own principles there. Right. You, um, uh, you were aware of the you, – you, you stated your awareness of the complexity of the, the situation and there are other stakeholders involved. That's right. And then you, you articulated what your role would be and what your boundaries were. Yes. And so in that sense, uh, it has the virtue of – you sold yourself as someone who has ethical principles, who is um, who is a moral person uh, that other people can disagree with, but at least it's clear that you have moral boundaries, and and this is one of them. And, and for and you, that strikes you as an advantage in the in the interview situation. It's a huge advantage in the interview situation, especially when I am otherwise prepared to provide contextual exceptions, right between right. murder and say, an act of killing that is not murder. For example, war would be an act of killing when it's not murder. Right. Or killing versus letting die. Like the That's example, right. one of the examples we talk about in the cars. <laughs> the cars. Um, course. Uh, exactly. Course. Exactly. In the MCAT right. 2050 and cars course. Right. Right. Yeah. So it, it, and the reason why I'm such a big fan of this approach is because it is so absolute. I can give context. I can be compassionate. I can, I can share my heart. I can share my... Uh, empathy for the patient and not uh, um, damage or violate my principles. I can do both. Right. Yeah. It's much harder if there are going to be uh, exigent circumstances. It's much harder for me to say that um, euthanasia is murder except on certain days or except on certain circumstances. That's a much harder line of reasoning and I have to give a lot more detailed definition of murder in order to get out of the potential, um, you know, the, the naughty argument that I could find myself in. If I'm in the middle of a medical school interview, I'm already nervous, I'm already hyped up, I'm already like jazzed out, and now I'm going to try to do this complex logical reasoning conversation with my interviewer? Mm -hmm. No way, I'm not going to, it's not going to work. It's going to be mm -hmm. too hard. Give me something easy that I can just like you know, the interviewer only has half an hour, right? So give me something easy that I can feed the interviewer that's clear, that right. states the case, but is also compassionate. Right. So, Kevin, um, you know, we did uh, critical analysis and reasoning skills uh, section of the MCAT, MCAT 2015. 
we have another video that talks about some of the changes on the MCAT. So let me go ahead and link that as well in the description box below. Uh, I'll see if I can add a little uh, link to that video here as well. Uh, and I hope that you guys found uh, our little uh, video uh, mini debate about uh, medical school interview ethics questions. Hope you found that valuable. And I look forward to talking to you guys next time. Have a great day. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.